In Greek mythology, Icarus's ambition led to his literal downfall when he flew too close to the sun and melted his wax wings. So yes, being overly ambitious does have its drawbacks, but so too does the lack of it. Immortals Phoenix Rising, for instance, offers a light and entertaining spin on Greek mythology that's clearly inspired by a reverence for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Its settings, systems and story are packed with references to iconic deities and legendary tales, but always with tongue planted firmly enough in cheek that it avoids coming off as self-important. The golem motif is a bit played out. All this flavour makes for a great setup that's complemented by fun combat, but the puzzle design across this colourful open world is disappointingly workmanlike. In a game about heavenly gods and fantastical monsters, the puzzles are far too grounded by earthly concerns. Only the foulest, most arrogant, narrow-minded coxer son of Kronos who trapped me beneath the earth, the one and only Zeus! How I missed you, Prometheus! Immortals' most inventive touch is its storytelling. The journey of Phoenix, a mortal soldier shipwrecked on a mystical island, is presented as a tale told by an imprisoned Prometheus to Zeus, and the dynamic between the two is hilarious. Let the tale of Phoenix be my redemption! Oh no, not one of your stories. The pair's bantering narration interjects regularly throughout your roughly 30-hour adventure to further the plot, provide mythological context, or simply crack jokes. Phoenix couldn't help but reflect on what the god of war had taught her. That there are a lot of bad chicken jokes. And further on, Immortals does an effective job of balancing the focus on humour with story-driven character development. The overarching story revolves around Typhon, a hulking monstrosity determined to destroy the gods forever. Behold your god! Typhon also interjects regularly as you travel across the Golden Isle, and he's none too happy that you're helping out the four gods this beast has transformed. Aphrodite, Hephaestus, Ares and Athena. Your potential is outweighed by your foolishness! And when I say transformed, I'm not embellishing. Alright, the jig is up. Just get it over with. Fillet me, it'll numb my pain. The emphasis here is very much on humour, and I delighted in seeing how the development team chose to play with each of these legendary beings. Their stories are full of fun moments and amusing dialogue. You saved me! Probably ruined the carpet. And they tie into the visual design of their respective regions too. Aphrodite's Valley of Eternal Spring, for instance, couldn't be more different from Ares' War's Den. Hermes, emissary of the god and all-round trickster, is also great value popping up unexpectedly during missions and always available at the Hall of the Gods, a mortal's hub for upgrades and crafting. We all have our vices. Many of the puzzles in the world, whether restoring a constellation or completing a fresco, are also references to classic fables. Out sprang the gorgeous anemone flower, a symbol of new life. Immortals' painterly presentation can be quite striking as you gallop through lush meadows or take in the sights from a clifftop, and it really is a playground for Phoenix. Just like Link, he or she can climb basically any obstacle given enough stamina, then glide towards whatever destination you've picked out using the wings of Daedalus. Exploration, though, is where Immortals stumbles a bit relative to its obvious inspiration. Phoenix's far-sight ability diminishes the joy of discovery somewhat, reducing it to a mechanical process of climbing to a vista, scanning the world, and marking out collectibles and challenges. To be honest, I'd much prefer not to know what's in that deep chasm before I jump in. If I'm aware in advance that there's a nugget of ambrosia waiting in there to expand my health bar, I'm just picking things off an upgrade menu rather than forging my own path. Regardless, many of the destinations in Immortals aren't what I'd describe as riveting. It's not that these challenges are bad, they just have no ambition whatsoever. That murky chasm I just mentioned? Turns out its deep secret was a puzzle where I had to shoot flaming arrows into three braziers to open a door. Then 20 meters further along, I had to find three switches to open another door. Then a bit on from that, there was a puzzle where I had to find three weights to put on three pressure plates to open yet another door. A large percentage of the puzzles in Immortals revolve around cookie cutter gameplay like this. That block-pushing school of puzzle design is so old school it makes the Greek myths feel practically contemporary. To be clear, I didn't actively dislike doing any of this. I just wasn't excited by it, nor did anything really test me or surprise me. And when puzzles are such a big part of the gameplay, that's disappointing. I'd much rather have had fewer puzzles that were more interesting and engaging. 
Thankfully, the combat fares a lot better, so anytime I felt like letting off steam, some fast-paced hacking, slashing, and wielding the powers of the gods was never farther away than one of the plentiful encounters in every area. <laughs> And I loved swapping my armor around and unlocking new abilities as the models progressed as it ensured the combat continually evolved. Taking a look at the skill trees, I largely focused on upgrading Phoenix's ability to dodge in the air and on the ground, and giving her follow-up attacks out of dodges. As is the way in video games, dodging as an enemy attack slows time, and I took advantage of that by extending her sword and axe combos too. Conversely, I could have focused on counters out of parries, or running attacks, or ways to do damage while airborne. I could even have ignored the skills altogether and gone all in on the godly powers. In that area, I chose to complement my focus on speed by giving my bird sidekick the ability to swoop down to damage and stun a target repeatedly, which is great for big threats. I also upgraded Hephaestus' hammer to give it a shockwave for crowd control. Whatever way you like to deal out damage, immortals will likely have something for you. Fights could use a bit more variety though. Sure, you'll often be attacked by a motley assortment of enemies at once. A minotaur or cyclops here, a couple of ethereal soldiers there, a gorgon slothing up behind, some harpies in the sky, and so on. The problem is, they don't have a great deal of personality beyond their attacks. And aside from obvious counters like using heavy attacks against shielded enemies or aerial combos against flying creatures, you can use a pretty basic strategy against most foes. Hit them until an attack is coming in, then dodge, rinse and repeat. Even so, I'm not opposed to combat that isn't overtly challenging if it's still fun, and Immortals' combat is very much that. Phoenix is responsive to control and felt more and more powerful as I progressed. And after clocking Immortals, I was pretty tempted to either go back to my pre-final boss save or to start a new game plus and try to max out all Phoenix's gear and abilities. But then I remembered the gameplay in between the combat and the exploration. Immortals Phoenix Rising gives us a gorgeous world to explore, filled with mythological beasts, deities, and powers to wield. Its combat is satisfying, with plenty of choices and upgrades, while its central characters, comedy, and storytelling are a real highlight. Seeing Phoenix's saga through to the end, with amusing commentary from Zeus, Prometheus, and other gods along the way, is a treat. Looks like you've been loving yourself far too much. Ugh, you might want to disinfect that toga. Its Achilles heel, though, is that so much of the puzzle gameplay feels like going through the motions instead of clever challenges. In the end, I wish Immortals Phoenix Rising had tried to soar just a little higher on the wings of ambition. For more open world action, check out our review of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and our feature on why Breath of the Wild is still riveting in 2020. And for everything else, stick with IGN.